Hi and welcome to this month's editorial video where we're talking all about data sovereignty and security. Maintaining data security in the hotel industry is a real issue. In this month's video we'll look at some of the top concerns and propose some key areas that hotels might want to consider. Also joining us in this video is Michael Heinze, Chief Architect at Shiji Group. Michael gives us his take on ways hotels best manage data sovereignty and security. Data security is a pivotal aspect for businesses in different industries, and the hotel and hospitality industry is no exception. Data breaches within the hospitality industry, particularly in hotels, have become a common concern due to the nature of the data that's collected. Hotels, motels, resorts, and rented apartments all gather, process, and electronically store sensitive personal customer information, such as names, phone numbers, addresses, credit card details, details, passport and driver license information. As a result, our industry becomes an ideal target for cyber criminals who are looking to commit credit card fraud and identity theft crimes. Any specific data breach may result in public scrutiny, damage to brand reputation, financial liability and create panic across the entire customer base. As databases are the backbone of any organization, companies need to understand the relevance of customer data security and take adequate steps to ensure the safety of the data that they're handling. In recent years, the hospitality industry has been a popular target for cyber criminals, hackers and scammers. The industry's heavy reliance on cards as the primary form of payment has been one of the top factors exploited by cyber criminals in the past. From the perspective of cyber criminals, hospitality is the ideal target for conducting crime like identity theft and credit card fraud, simply due to the existence of multiple databases and devices containing both payment card information and personally identifiable information. So what is data sovereignty? It focuses on the rights to the storage of company and customer data based on the business's location. Several laws are in place to secure data and guarantee privacy for individuals from foreign threats. The data sovereignty aspect gives a company the right to release or withhold any information that they hold secure within their systems. Well, data sovereignty needs to be looked at from two perspectives. Uh, one is from the hotel perspective itself, and the second one is the brand or chain perspective, because usually they are different locations. For the hotel, it means that depending on the local data regulations, usually the guest PI that needs to reside within the legislation. Uh, in key markets like Europe, that means within the EU, uh, in the US, uh, the data needs to reside in the in the US, specifically for California. Uh, we are aware of specific uh, types of hotels, like casino hotels, for example, that have much stricter uh, data regulation requirements because of the gaming affiliation. Uh, so in those cases, the gaming laws applies where sometimes the data needs to be stored in country and sometimes even in uh, in pre or on on premises of the of the hotels. So from that perspective, um, it just requires any kind of software vendor that the PI data is actually stored within that jurisdiction or within that geography. Uh, now there are several options we have. We have you know, certainly legacy on-premise PMS vendors that you know, do deploy uh, into the hotel. And from that perspective, the data sovereignty is usually not an issue because it's deployed on site, which is by definition in country as well. Uh, for cloud offerings, uh, that's very different because yes, while larger hosters like AWS, Google, Microsoft in the meantime offer multiple locations and some, not all, but some services actually offer the possibility to select the location where to store specific data. Uh, this needs to be reviewed for specific business applications, for example, for the hospitality industry which locations do they support, do they actually support uh, the, you know, being able to let the customer select their, uh, you know, geography of uh, location uh, and uh, of the processing of the PI data. So that needs to be reviewed. Uh, we in, in at, at GG, we certainly look at enabling all our products 
for this, uh, you know, customizability to store the data in specific countries or even on premises for the PI data. Um, and we get great feedback from our customers. Again, that's for the hotel side. For hotel chains of brands that usually aggregate data from multiple hotels, even multiple brands, multiple countries, multiple regions, that's a very different topic uh, because that actually uh, then goes into the topic of the consent management. So people actually do consent or need to consent uh, to share the data across borders. We call this the cross-border data transfer consent. And with that, it's certainly uh, possible and legally sound to transfer the data out of country and store it somewhere else. Uh, where the friction usually happens is that, uh, you know, obviously guests want to maintain the highest level of privacy on one side. Hotels, brands and chains, you know, want to do as much as the data they can to, first of all, provide the best service to the guest. And that's probably something that's in the guest interests. Uh, but many hotel chains also try to uh, have more advanced you know, analytics running over the data or more advanced marketing campaigns. And that's then sometimes where people get a little bit shy about what happens with the data. Uh, that needs to be looked at. Um, but we can just say that it is certainly possible to establish a legal framework and together with a technical framework to establish in country or in region data storage for the hotels while being compliant uh, for the hotel brands and hotel chains, respective data aggregation and the respective uh, legal agreements. So let's run through some of the top security concerns within the hospitality industry. Businesses within the hospitality industry usually have complex ownership structures. These could be a franchisor, an individual owner, a group of owners and even a management company that acts as the operator. They typically operate as a separate team, take on personal responsibilities whilst using different computer systems to share and store data. This information can also frequently move across those various systems, which then increases the potential data breach. Heavy reliance on electronic payment methods. Hotels and restaurants are heavily reliant on credit cards and other paperless electronic payment methods. They often require credit card details for reservations, and the final payment is typically made by the same card already on file. Cyber criminals tend to use this reliance on electronic cards to infect point of sale systems with malware, which then steals credit and debit card information by scraping that data. As malware can often proliferate between systems run by the same operator, multiple individuals and groups of hotels within organizations can be impacted by these attacks, which can often go unnoticed for months. Data disposal processes. It is estimated that many hospitality companies don't have policies in place for storing or disposing of confidential paper documents, nor do they have a regulated protocol for storing and disposing of customers' electronic information. This, of course, only increases the risk of data breaches. Rapid staff turnover rates. Training staff with proper protocols for safely gathering and storing personal data is a very important point. Formal training helps staff become familiar with compliance guidelines. The high level of turnover and high degree of staff movement between different locations within businesses make it a real challenge to maintain teams of well-trained staff. Lack of familiarity with data security protocols by even a single staff member can prove advantageous for cyber criminals who are just waiting to hack into a computer system. Human manipulation. We tend to not consider the fact that hotel staff are unknowingly one of the biggest security threats because they tend to be the most vulnerable to attacks. Data intruders exploit normal human behavior to steal users' credentials and access networks. Compliance. The hospitality industry and political regulators are now stricter in governing how organizations store and process personal data. The GDPR has returned control over personal information to individuals while simultaneously enforcing stricter rules for protecting such information. PCI DSS is another essential global regulation that protects credit card data. Fines for non-compliance can begin at $500,000 per incident. Insider threats. 
Although less common, the threat of company employees selling data to third parties without the knowledge of their employer is a concern for any business. Insider threats occur typically in areas like data on customer preferences and behaviors, which get collected at multiple touch points, right from interactions with a website to form data on booking systems and even review data. This data could be potentially lucrative when it ends up in the hands of those who know how to use it to gain a competitive advantage. In principle, I believe the situation today for many hotels is that they have an uh, you know, on-premise product installed. Um, you know, we have a, a couple of usual suspects as vendors. Uh, they have local SQL servers at the hotels. Uh, and then they have those various, you know, applications accessing those SQL servers for the data in the property or in the in the network of the, the resort, for example. Um, while that is compliant from a data sovereignty perspective, data privacy, data security is a very different topic because usually those products have been built in the say, 80s or 90s and data protection wasn't such an important topic as it was today. So uh, most of the times the hotels really need to build build multiple walls of protection in the network, in the organization, you know, in the software, in the security to actually protect those old products because they've never been built for that. So now when hotels actually want to switch to a new generation hotel software, that's usually cloud. Um, well, they should look um, at the, vent, the various vendors they're looking at and ask them, you know, do they have deployments in different countries? How do they manage the data sovereignty, the data protection, data privacy with other customers, do they have you know, best practices, for example, of how to handle cross-border transfers if necessary or not, and how do they set up uh, you know, the legal grounds for any kind of transfer where required? Or, and that's usually a very good question, how do those companies provide data processing agreements between uh, the vendor and the hotel uh, because the say the maturity of those data processing agreements actually articulates pretty well how a company is positioned to deal with data security and privacy. Um, that said, um, you know, there's no generic rule because every hotel is different, every country is different, you know, affili hotel affiliations, hotel ownership are different. But in, in principle, the better prepared a company is to handle both the technical and the legal concerns of that implementation, uh, the better the result will most likely be. Um, the legal terms, the proper legal terms to use here are the hotels are the data operators. So they are ultimately responsible for the data handling, data storage, data processing towards the consumer, towards the guest. And a PMS vendor and a hospitality IT vendor, in that case it's called data processor. That's the legal term. And so really the key here is the uh, legal relationship that's called the data processing agreement between the data controller, the hotel organization, and the uh, data processor, which is the IT vendor in this case. Uh, the better prepared an IT vendor is, for example, in the form of the DPA, in the form of best practices for data sovereignty, in the form of uh, privacy statements, in the form of recommendations, how to spell out the terms and conditions on the hotel website, for example, that will give very good indications to the hotels which vendor is a reliable partner uh, in this context. Hospitality organizations are an attractive target for cyber criminals due to the extensive databases and typically low levels of security. With GDPR, countries worldwide are adopting new legislation that aims to protect individual sensitive information and make companies accountable for data breaches. Our industry needs to put cybersecurity as a key point of focus for managing risk, potential financial loss, fines, and ultimately disastrous consequences to a brand's reputation. Reputation. But what can we do to protect the sensitive data from breaches? Here are some essential areas that can be implemented to protect customer data. Implement a training program in cybersecurity. Formal employee training for all staff is a great start to ensuring data security. Have clear and strict policies regarding the disposal of sensitive physical documents and wiping clean electronic records. This helps to ensure every employee is trained to handle sensitive data securely. 
In addition, informing staff on the basic methods used by hackers to obtain this information will also assist in increasing security. Encrypt payment card information. Encryption of payment card information is crucial to secure all electronic devices like laptops, desktop computers, flash drives, and even USB drives. Encrypting sensitive payment data ensures that only properly trained and trusted employees can access and view customer payment information through passwords or access certifications. Keep devices up to date and backed up. Whether it is the back office systems or a hotel's digital locks, older hardware running outdated software becomes an easy target for data breaches. Not maintaining updates and software patches for these older systems can be a significant risk. Have your IT manager or vendor set these devices so that they automatically accept and install periodical updates when issued to protect the sensitive information. Backing up your data is generally easy and cost effective and goes a long way to ensuring data security. To reduce the risk of losing data or having it irretrievably damaged, it is important to make a habit of backing it up. Information such as financial records, business plans, customer data and personal information can all be backed up. Prioritize password security. Choosing your data passwords wisely and strategically is another simple but powerful option. Selecting a hard password for an unauthorized user to guess, but is, is easy for you to remember, is crucial to prevent unauthorized access. Another option is to use unique passwords for each login. If the same password is used for an email account as done for other systems, such as a property management system, the attacker could steal the email username and password and then try using those credentials within the PMS system. Invest in a digital password manager so that staff members can securely store passwords in an encrypted digital vault instead of writing them down on paper or even trying to remember them. Securing passwords via a master password and multi-factor authentication is another good option. Consider implementing two-factor authentication as an added layer of security that also gives users access to a system after successfully presenting another authentication method along with the password, such as a PIN number, push notification to a phone, a code generated via an authenticator app, or even biometrics such as fingerprint or face ID. Should a username and password become compromised, two-factor authentication protects against unauthorized access to systems by requiring a layer of information or action to proceed with the login. Isolated sensitive information. Systems containing financial information or guest data should be set up to be accessed via multi-factor authentication. Try to keep the computer, laptop or tablet away from public eyes and consider installing a computer privacy screen which prevents prying eyes from seeing sensitive guests information. Secure on property networks. One of the frequent areas of data vulnerabilities for hotels can be from the public Wi-Fi network. Newer Wi-Fi technologies have built-in tools called intrusion prevention systems, which help identify potentially malicious activities and automatically blocks them without any human intervention. It is a good idea to separate wireless networks used by guests from those used by staff and property computer systems. This can be done either physically by having two completely separate sets of hardware and networks or through the use of a virtual LAN, virtual networks. I do know that encryption usually is seen as you like, you know, the counterpart for data privacy. So basically, as soon as you encrypt something or everything, then you're kind of fine. It's not quite easy like that. Uh, in order to be fully compliant for those various uh, you know, data protection regulations and the respective uh, legal expressions like GDPR, CCPA, CSL, and so on and so on, uh, you know, a little bit diverging from country to country, you have a number of security controls. Uh, yes, encryption is one of those, uh, and it just makes sure that if somebody takes a hard drive or something with them in a, some kind of physical way, that the data is not readable in that form. Uh, it also makes it a little bit harder for various, you know, network infiltration ways to extract the data. But it's only one of numerous uh, security controls. For those guys specifically interested in, in encryption, there are two ways to protect the data. Uh, one is the encryption at rest. 
that's usually implemented through a so-called AES encryption. That's the latest status, and that's pretty standard anyhow for any software developer. Uh, the other way is encryption while in transit. That's like when data is communicated from to somewhere. Today, usually it's encrypted via HTTPS and the protocol there's TLS. Uh, but again, that's pretty standard. So encryption by itself for any state of the art vendor shouldn't pose any kind of challenge. Um, that's like built in all the frameworks and all the development and deployment and hosting frameworks anyhow. It's really the other dozens of security controls that affect general network, organizational, how to design the software and the processes to be secure, uh, not only against, uh, you know, hard network attacks, but also against social attacks, um, you know, and, um, you know, ransomware attacks, as we heard many times now in the news again in the last weeks, uh, and various other forms of attacks that need to be considered in a, you know, security strategy. In today's digital economy, companies in all industries face some sort of security breach and ensuring the privacy and security of sensitive data becomes even more challenging, especially within the hospitality industry. As hotels continue to expand how they collect data from their customers, it is more important than ever to commit to securely managing all the collected data. By having a proper understanding of the importance of data security, hotels are better positioned to implement effective strategies to ensure the safety of customer data. If necessary, use outsourced services to help take the load off ensuring data security and confidentiality. It's only going to help you reduce cybersecurity risks. If you would like more information on GDPR and biometrics, make sure you check out our other editorials that cover these topics. So once again, thanks for watching. If you haven't already downloaded our app available on the Apple and Android stores, please make sure you do that. You'll be able to access all of our content uh, offline as well. So it's a, it's a handy way of getting access to our podcasts and our videos. Until next time, it's bye for now.